What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hey, what's up, y'all? Champ Ron, the Mind of Your Business podcast. We're going to come to you with episode number 118. I'm excited about uh, today's episode. Uh, it's going to be uh, fairly short and sweet today. But thank you so much for joining, for everybody that's joining on Spreaker.com Live, everybody that's on Facebook Live, everybody's on Instagram, everybody that's on Twitter, everybody that's on LinkedIn and all around. Thank you all so much, man, for joining in. Hope your week's been fantastic. Hope you had a great time on yesterday. What up, Twyla? What up, Kristen? How y'all doing, man? Thank y'all for jumping in. And uh, I'm going to get started here uh, because, again, I want to be uh, brief today because I've got a lot of things going on. I'm here in the office, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, getting ready to come again for episode number 118. Um, a few things we're going to get into today uh, on today's episode. One, I want to start off with discussing uh, holiday shopping and the browning of holiday shopping. And I want to get into what exactly I mean by the browning of it, because it may not be exactly what you may be thinking uh, when I say the browning of it. So I want to get into that first. Um, I want to touch briefly on job hunting during the holidays. So some of you or, or a lot of you that are listening or those that are watching, uh, may be looking for new employment. You may be looking to change jobs between one company to another. You're looking to make more money. You're looking to launch your career maybe a little further in 2020. So I want to share with you a tool that's going to help you as well as just talk about the process of job hunting during the holiday season because you may be surprised at what opportunities come your way uh, where most people get out the game by staying in the game can really help you. I also want to get into, as I wrap up today's podcast, I want to get into some advice that I got. Earlier this year, I got advice from uh, a very pretty prominent CEO, uh, bank CEO in Michigan. And he shared something with me that I probably should have already known to some extent. Either I knew it and didn't practice it or I didn't know it one of the two. Either way, I implemented his advice and it's really helped my business. And it, it's fairly small and minute. And that's why I said I should have known about it. But for some reason, I did not. And so because I did not know it or did not want to admit that I didn't know it, whatever, whatever the case was with it, it was eye opening and it helped my business tremendously through 2019. So I want to share that with you today on the Minding Your Business podcast, and I'm your host, Champ Ron. Podcast is brought to you by the Binge Podcast Network. Check us out at onabinge.com. All the great podcasters and podcast shows uh, you can find. And of course, you, my Facebook Live audience and Spreaker, thank you all so much again. Uh, when I do this podcast, I record it live. There's no editing, no nothing like that. So I'm straight live coming to you straight off the dome. So, well, not so much off the dome. I, I write down some notes and then I, I bring information to y'all. And you also know that with my podcast, when I bring information to you, whether it's me or my guest, it is from our experiences. So there's no theory. There's no, um, this might happen or, or that might happen. Or yeah, you know, I typically come to you with things that either I've done or I have witnessed done. Right. So it's not hearsay. It's not any of that type of thing. So I share with you good, bad or ugly. It's going to be uh, straight from me and then straight from the guests. So entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. This week we launched the first round of the minding your business brand T-shirts. So shout out to my guy El or Ernest Fields and Millionaire Grind, Ernest Fields and Millionaire Grind. Check them out, millionairegrind.com. Thank him so much uh, for him and his team for powering the first round of the brand. There's seven different color T-shirts that are now available. You can get those for $19.99 at the mybpodcast.com backslash shop. 
So the MYB podcast.com backslash shop. You can pick that up. No shipping, just $19.99. The shirts read, there's no business like minding your own, which is part of our tagline. So I appreciate everybody's support. Man, the red ones, I don't know what it is with y'all in red, but the red ones just started popping <laughs> right off the bat. I posted the link, uh, I believe, not quite a week ago. And we just started selling. It seems like the red ones moved, the white ones moved, the blue ones. But that red, for some reason, y'all just like that red and white. And it is sharp. So anyway, go and check those out. Uh, if you're on social media, you can inbox me and uh, let me know what you want. And I'll make sure that it gets to you. All right. Shout out to everybody, man. What's up, Kevin? What's up, Sandra? What's up, Jason? What's up, Brian? What's up? Thank you all. Those are folks joining in on the Facebook Live. So listen, real quick, the browning of holiday shopping. So I hope everybody enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday yesterday. I hope you found it to be um, safe. I hope you found it to be enjoyable. I hope you found it to be enlightening and maybe in some cases with that uncle that uh, won't seem to let go of the impeachment talk with the president and um, any other conspiracy theory that uh, he or, or the auntie that talks about that <laughs> brings up at the dinner table. Um, but I hope that you found uh, joy in connecting. I hope that joy continues uh, as you go, not just through the holiday season, man, but as you go into 2020. But now we're, you know, today's what they refer to as Black Friday. And so people are out shopping. A lot of people are online. They're shutting down websites. They're shutting down apps. People are, are buying uh, items that companies are putting on sale and, and that sort of thing. One of the things that uh, was eye-opening when you think about holiday shopping, particularly holiday shopping in today's times, is there's a browning of it. And that's been going on for some time. Of course, for many years now, online sales have been increasing, right? Every you know year, it seems like the the statistics or the predictions for the number of people and the amount of dollars that are going to be spent online. You know, shopping keeps increasing, increasing, and increasing. One of the things that's big this year that maybe hasn't been in years past is when I say the browning of holiday shopping, I'm talking about shipping boxes, the brown boxes. Because here's what's going on. Amazon, um, based on the Wall Street Journal article that came out today, Amazon is putting up 1.5 billion with a B dollars into shipping for one day next or next day or one day shipping. And what that's doing, of course, Amazon's been a disruptor for a minute. So what that's doing is getting Walmart and Target to start getting into the game. So there's some other environmental issues with all these boxes going around and all that. We'll talk about that in another episode. But the browning of it is, is as people continue to go into stores less, and I'm going to jump on that in a second too, but as people go in stores less, and you may not be in stores as much and that sort of thing, you may do your shopping exclusively online. So people now have all these boxes coming to their front door all the time. And companies are realizing that. They're realizing that shipping is such a big part of people's decision-making, the psyche of, of buying and what that plays into it. What's interesting is, so Amazon's kind of setting the pace with this, right? That They're saying, okay, you get an Amazon Prime membership. An Amazon Prime membership costs you, what, $120 a year, right? So that comes down to about $10 a month. And that's an opportunity for you to get free shipping on any of your orders. So that's, a, in my opinion, that's a, a smart way to do it is to get the membership and get people, get that residual income. And they've already done the analysis that people do so many orders per year and how much that's going to cost them on average. And it tends to balance out. Walmart and Target for that same shipping is about roughly $35 uh, per item to have it shipped in a one day fashion or next day fashion. Now keep in mind, Amazon's doing it for like 10 million different items that they got on their website. All right, NYB, Walmart and Target, $35. Of course, Walmart and Target is saying, well, we don't have the, uh, the, mo the monthly or the annual fee. There's no membership for us. We just, we charge the flat $35. I think that's a mistake. 
I don't know. You guys can share what you think. Uh, email me, Ron, at themybpodcast.com, or if you're on social media, you can comment with this. But let me know what your thoughts are on that because Amazon setting the trend for that and why Walmart and Target wouldn't go and match that, to me, blows my mind. Um, and maybe it's a capacity issue. There may be issues with that. But Walmart and Target sticking with that $35, like having a charge for shipping right now, to me, it, it beca- is more of a hindrance. I would find a way to compete with Amazon in some form or fashion on the shipping piece because now, and it may not work 100% for Amazon, but when you start talking about you know free one day shipping, I don't know about y'all, and you know listen, you know my wife is on there. I'm sure you know fellas, you you got your significant other, your lady, your wife. However, uh, ladies, you know you're on there doing your thing. Uh, if you mess with Amazon, you know that free one day shipping is a monster. <laughs> it's a monster. Because if you talk about ordering something by a certain time of day today and getting it by tomorrow, or in this case, today's Friday, so you might get it, say, Monday morning, you know, that's a game changer, uh, particularly as you get later into the holidays. And with this being a short kind of holiday shopping season, with Thanksgiving being so late in November, I, I, I think it's a mistake for any retailer to not somewhat get into some course of how they're going to match that up. Either you're going to straight copy what Amazon did, if that's what you want to do as a retailer, or you got to offer some other value, right, other than, you know, that shipping. I don't think Target and Walmart are offering enough of a value if they're going to make it $35 and their value proposition is, well, we don't have the monthly membership. Because here's the thing, with that Amazon Prime, that has so much value. Yeah, Amazon's done a great job with creating a value system around their Prime membership. I mean, all the way like, you know, my wife and I, we go into Whole Foods, right? Just the other day, I went to Whole Foods. They had ground beef with your Prime membership that was like, like four dollars a pound or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, they they have all these different things sprinkled around, and then you can get discounts by scanning your. Um, your Prime membership uh, app, like the little barcode or whatever, uh, QR code. So they've created a whole value system around that. And so I don't know if people mind that as much at $10 a month, you know, $120 a year. So if you're Walmart and Target, or even if you're yourself, if NYB for your business, and you may not be scaled to the level of those three, but consider that shipping plays a huge role. You heard me talk about with our shirts, right? No shipping. Now, I've just rolled that into the cost because I want to be able to to drive sales. I want to be able to get my shirts out to as many people as possible. And a few of you have a shirt on the way uh, as I speak now. But think about this as you develop your business, and not just for the holiday season, but even going forward into 2020, look at the psychology of shipping. Right. If you can, you know, make sure you understand your cost. You know, we had Philip Ashley Ricks on several episodes back, and he's done a great job. He understands shipping and, and that sort of thing. And, and having conversations with him, he understands not just um, the functionality of shipping, but he understands the psychology of it, too, and his marketing and his branding. And many of you do as well. You have a good sense of understanding of what that is. But I'm just, uh, you know, either issuing a reminder or maybe I'm being insightful and informing you that it makes a lot of sense if you're going to get into uh, distribution and shipping that you you take a close look at what Amazon is doing and then take a close look at what Walmart and Target are doing. Now, both of them are going to do their thing, right? They're both huge national brands, international brands. They're going to do their thing. But I think when you start comparing the numbers, um, you're going to see that I think Walmart and Target are making a mistake by not getting into a much more reduced cost, particularly on that one day shipping. Again, where it makes sense. So share with me if you're on Facebook Live or you're on Spreaker. I see uh, I see John on uh, Spreaker. Yeah, he's giving the thumbs up. What up, John? 
So John said that he's doing a, uh, a Black Friday deal uh, with his business. He, and he looked at one day shipping and he, he's just eating it, but he's, he's already been moving some volume. So yeah, shout out to you, John. Uh, hope that uh, that definitely goes well for you. Uh, he said that he took uh, the top retailers and studied those. So that's definitely what's up. So that's what, but that's what I would do. I would study the retailers if you're selling products or if you're on social media now and you are um, promoting Black Friday deals for your business or whatnot, just consider the, the browning of this time of the year with brown boxes and ways that you could get that brown box with your product in it to people without them having to pay an arm and a leg. I've seen ladies even on social media laughing it made me laugh where they'll leave things sitting in their cart. Some of y'all may do this. I see some of y'all laughing. Um, you may put items in your cart because y'all know where I'm going. You put items in your cart when you're shopping online and you wait to see when the shipping deal comes up or if they just arbitrarily offer you based on your relationship with the company, they may arbitrarily offer you free shipping or reduced cost shipping or whatever it is. And that makes a big difference, I see, for a lot of people as to whether you quit or click submit uh, to process that order and, and charge your debit or credit card or PayPal or whatever it is that you're doing. So consider that when you're looking at uh, the browning uh, of the holiday season. But I'm going to be monitoring it, keeping watch on uh, what the top retailers do because uh, they tend to give a, a good signal of uh, what the economy looks like, what people's confidence, when you see that metric that comes out about consumer confidence and all that type of thing, um, it gives uh, a really nice uh, insight as to what people are thinking and how they're feeling, which can impact and help your business uh, as well. Because depending on what type of business that you're in, if you're a business to business or a business to consumer, or maybe a little bit of both, depending on what you're doing, you're going to want to know what people are doing with their disposable income. Because more than likely, that's the income that they're using to buy your product or service. So keep that in mind, NYB, as you're building your own brand, as you're progressing your own brand, and as you're going, wrap it up 2019 and then going into 2020. So that's that for kind of the, the holiday season. I wanted to get that off my chest a little bit. Um, if you want to comment some more, uh, please do so. Looks like we got some folks. Bob Midget, what's up? Happy Thanksgiving to you, man. Um, Sandra says, and then don't purchase. Sandra's on Facebook Live. She said, and then don't purchase if the shipping's too high. Uh, I think that's very true, Sandra. I think that um, one of the things that uh, I just talked about this, one of the things that hinders uh, sales sometimes is uh, not having the right happy medium between shipping cost and, and the cost of the product and, and the distribution timeline of getting that product to uh, the order or the consumer. And that's something you got to be mindful of even when you're starting out your business and even when you're vetting out business ideas to even launch. You have to make sure that you have a good uh, grasp on that. But yeah, if that shipping is too high uh, and you don't have a compensating value, right? If you go have high shipping, there's something about the product or service, you know, whatever it is, um, has to more than compensate for that uh, high shipping cost. Now, I don't know what the hell that's going to be. It just depends on your business and that sort of thing. But um, Sandra's right. If the shipping's too high, uh, there's many, you, you fall into the trap of uh, uh, allowing your competitors to come in and get that sale. And you multiply that by tens, hundreds, thousands, millions, and that can impact even the largest retailers. So, yeah, thank you for that, Sandra. And thank you, John, for sharing uh, uh, your tidbits as well. So, changing course just a little bit, let's get into uh, job hunting during the holidays. One of the things that comes up, and I, uh, I'm i a support member in Memphis career uh, transitions and the transition groups here in Memphis, Tennessee. 
And even in my travels, I don't see in even some large cities, groups that are quite like the group we have here. So shout out to Memphis Career Transitions. You guys should check that out. If you're here in Memphis, or you're looking to relocate to Memphis, you should check it out. A lot of people during this time of the year, uh, they stop their job hunting. They think that companies are going to not be looking for new talent or not look as aggressively or kind of or put it off because hiring managers tend to take obviously a lot of time off during this time of the year from between Thanksgiving and you know the first week or two in January. You tend to have people kind of in and out of the office. They're, they may not be as open to uh, looking for new talent. But one of the things you have to do, NYB, let me plead with you right now, okay? Keep looking. If you're looking for a job, if you're looking to transition from one job to the next, or from one company to the next, you have to keep the course. But that course includes you got to network. And I've said this on this podcast probably a million times, and I've had guests say it two million times. You cannot sit on your computer and apply and bang out job applications one after the other and hope, pray, rain dance, you know, uh, do whatever you got to do to then try to hopefully get a call back in an interview. You're going to have to network. That's just that's the nature of today's game. It is. It's the nature of today's game. So I'm encouraging you, and there's information out there you know, that will support this. Um, and I was reading an article about it this week, and it inspired me to bring this to you, NYB, is if you are job hunting, network. You got to get out to events. You got to get out to where the companies are that you want to connect with, and you've got to network. What is networking? I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing of that. But networking is not you showing up to talk. So, like I'm talking on this podcast, I'm not doing a whole lot of listening. No one's talking to me. But when you get to these networking events, you need to do a lot of listening. And that's hard for people because most times as human beings, um, especially as American human beings, we like to talk and we like to share, you know, about us. And then we listen for things that are common to us when, when someone is talking and we're listening. Oftentimes what we're listening for is commonality. We listen for, do they go to the same school? Are they from the same area? Do they have the same family structure? Uh, are they close to my age? Are they close to my parents' age? Whatever that is. But you have to actively listen for opportunity. And listen, I understand that bills are due. I understand that you want to have some extra money in your pocket. You want to be able to identify yourself with a, a uh, work opportunity. I get all that. But one of the things that is not going to help you is you running into people or calling people up and all you're doing is just throwing up on them. You just you're just asking for you know you know who's hiring. You know I get that all the time. You know uh, Ron, who's hiring? Are you hiring? Is this person hiring? Is that person? And you haven't established yourself with any kind of value, and you haven't built any kind of relationship. And I tell people in career transitions all the time, you have to develop relationships with people to where they're going to be advocates for you. And they're not going to do that if the only time they hear from you is when you just got fired or when you just got laid off or when the people at the job pissed you off for the last time and you quit or whatever happened. They locked the doors to the job and don't let you back in. Whatever happens, right? And the only time people, like some people, the only time I hear from them is when they're out of work. That's the only time I hear from them. And I know if I hadn't heard from them in a while, they're doing good and they're working their job or whatever it is that they're doing. And when they start blowing my phone up, I know the first time I know they call, I already know. Before I even answer this phone, something doesn't happen or something's about to go down at the job. And that's why they're calling me because now they want to, they're in the mode of looking either as a panic situation or they know it's coming and they're trying to get ahead of it. But you got to build relationships with people. So this holiday season, if you are job hunting, 
Make sure that you're solidifying relationships. What do you do? Go through your list, go through your phone, go through your contacts, and start reaching out to people now. Not the day after you get fired, not the day after you get laid off or the week or the month or, or whatnot. You gotta be touching bases with people all the time. I wasn't always good with that. I just try to be better with it now. But um, if, you're, if you are seeking a job, you, you've got to build relationships. So you've got to be in constant contact. You've got to be letting people know what you're looking for, what you want to do. And what you want to do is not just anything that will just pay you some money. You know, what are your skill sets? What do you bring to the table? What companies do you want to work for? And how do you, do you want or prefer to connect with them? And you want connections. All right? So, but you've got to get from behind your computer. You got to get off your timeline. You got to stop trolling and scrolling. And you got to get out there and you got to be active. One tool I want you to write down, and I'm going to put this on Spreaker and I'm going to put it on uh, Facebook Live, is I want you to go to jobscan.co. Okay? Go to jobscan.co. What is that, Chaperon? All right, I'm glad you asked. What that is, is it's a good site, it's free. And what it allows you to do is it will allow you to um, post your resume. So it lets you um, copy and paste your resume into one block. And then in the other block, post your job description. So the job that you want to apply for, you're going to copy and paste that into your uh, into one uh, box on the site and then the other one's going to be your resume what it's going to do is when you hit submit there it is going to um, combine those two it's going to combine your resume it's going to combine the job description and it's going to give you a percentage match and, and this is what a lot of the ATS or automatic tracking systems use to filter out applications and give either HR or the and or the hiring manager who are the better candidates based on who has in their resume the most keywords from the job description, uh, who has the actual title of the job that you're applying for in their resume, so meaning that you've done the position before, or it's a position that you desire, so that's written somewhere in your resume. The other thing this tool allows you to do at jobscan.co is it allows you to not manipulate, not so much manipulate your resume, but it allows you to play some of the game of uh, looking at your keywords and then looking and thinking about your experience and then combining those two as well. So if you've got experience in an area that you might not have spelled out in your resume, the way that the company has it spelled out in their job description, now you can edit and make those adjustments to your resume and make yourself that much more attractive to the tracking system. Now, what does that do? What that does is that gives you a better shot at getting a phone call to get an interview. Most of you all are very good at probably at interviewing. You may have done it a good bit. You've been to school. You've been to college. And so you may be good at, once you get face-to-face -face with another human being, there's more than likely a good chance that you're going to get the job. I always felt that way when I was in the workforce. I always felt that if I could get past all the mumbo-jumbo of the computer and I get one-on-one -on -one or one against whoever in uh, a face-to-face, -face, I'm more than likely going to get that role. I'm going to get that job, right? Because I know how to position myself. I know how to answer the questions. I know what they're looking for. I know how to prepare. I know how to do the research. And I know how to come with my own set of questions that are relevant that are going to make them think and make them remember me. And you all know how to do that too, I imagine. But one of the challenges that you have is getting past the computer gateway system. The, you know, the, the computer now serves as a gatekeeper. So to get past that, again, go to jobscan.co, all right? 
And when you do that, and it's free, I think they allow you like 20 scans or something like that for free, and then you have to register, which is no big deal. You can register. I mean, it's, you know, um, you, matter of fact, I think you can register with your LinkedIn profile. So if you're signed into LinkedIn, you can actually go and register there um, and then do what you got to do uh, there. So uh, I recommend that you all do that. Go to jobscan.co. All right, do that today. All right, do that today. When you get done listening to this podcast, go to jobscan.co. If you want to tell them I don't get nothing for it, you can tell them I sent you. But here's the deal. Um, use that tool so as you come across a position you want to apply for, before you apply, okay, before you apply, um, copy and paste your resume and that job description in the jobscan.co and see how much you match. If you come up at 15% and 20% and all that type of thing, you've got some work to do. If you come up at 50, 60%, you're probably a little better. And if you get into that 70, 80, 90%, uh, you definitely need to apply for that position because more than likely you're going to get a phone call because your resume and the job description match up very well. So that's just a tidbit tool that I want you all to uh, make sure that you use. That's www.jobscan.co. Okay. Best wishes to you. Uh, for those of you that are uh, in the job market or you're looking, because I know there's you know, the job market is tight or they say it's tight. And I know a lot of people are not making the money that they would like to. You know, the cost of things have jumped up. You haven't gotten the increases on your job uh, that you would have liked to. You're, you're looking to, to boost that up and, and, or, and or you're looking to progress your career. Now is a great time in the holidays to do that. Um, but you're going to have to reach out to connect. Don't be afraid to reach out. Do not be afraid. If you have not kept up with people, now you have to start somewhere. So start. All right? I share with people all the time because most people only like to reach out to people when they want something or they need something. And then once they get that, they go on with what they got to do and until the next time they need. What you have to do is um, periodically just put it on your calendar. I put it on my calendar just to, even if it's not just sending a text message or just say, hey, I just want to have a quick 10 minute, you know, five to 10 minute conversation just to keep up with fill in the blank, whoever that is. And, and just make that a part. It's part of doing business. It's part of your personal. It's just, you know, keeping in touch with people. Um, as much as you can. That way, when that you are in need, you you've had an established relationship with people, and it, it it makes the conversation so much more smoother and warmer because you've been having conversations, and they're not always about you asking for something, right? And so then, um, people are more likely to get engaged and. and know how to help you so that they can help you. you know, a lot of times people stay away because they don't really know how to help you because they don't really know what you're looking for because you're just in this panic of, hey, I want to get a job. So, or can you introduce me to this person or that person? And some people, eat, as much as they may really like you and be cool with you, they may not want to put their name on the, on the line or on the chopping block. You know what I mean? Or their reputation. So in order for people to feel comfortable doing that, they need to know what you're looking for and have a relationship and understand how that fits into what your goals are. So you got to be having those conversations is what I'm saying. So happy job hunting to everybody. And as you do your job hunt, don't forget that you need to have some piece of what you do as your own. Some piece of what you do needs to be yours. Everything that you do, every dollar that comes in your house don't need to be off what somebody else generated, that you're just help, you're administratively helping move. Something needs to be yours. What are you going to leave to your children? But you, you, you can't, you're not going to be able to give your job to your child. Most jobs, when you step down, they go hire somebody else. You might have some kind of influence. There are certain industries where you can do a little bit of that. 
but it's still nobody, you, you never own it. So you never owned it, you sat in a position, you helped get your son or your daughter on it, they never own any piece of it. So own some piece of your production. So even if you're working, you know, have something that, that's yours, that's not theirs, right? Not just so you can fall back on it, but so you can grow and, and maybe build something either combined or maybe separate, however it is. So just again, happy job hunting for you, uh, but look for something, some piece of it that you want. All right, let me get to, as we're coming out of that, so we, we've talked about the browning of holiday shopping, man. Um, I'm get, I'm, I want to get to some of these questions here um, in just a minute because I want to hit this next topic and then I want to get to some of y'all's questions because uh, there's some good stuff out here that I want to get to. Earlier this year, I, now you, know, you all know that I do bank consulting. So you know that in bank consulting, I'm helping banks invest in low to moderate income communities and how they service those low to moderate income communities in relation to the rest of the communities that a bank may serve. So a bank may be in, you know, they may have branches in certain parts of their community, usually different counties, they may be in different states. And so they often look for, from a Community Reinvestment Act standpoint, CRA, they look for opportunities to ensure that they are properly and equally investing in all their communities, not just certain ones, right? And so I helped them do that. So in meeting with the CEO, earlier this year I met with a CEO, and I can't say that we've become buddies or anything like that, but we've become close. We, um, on a professional tip, we've become close. And he shared with me something that I want to share with you, MYB. We were talking about my business uh, and from a consulting practice standpoint. And on my website and in my speech and in my presentation and my letter, all the, all the materials that I had um, for my company, for Brooks Brothers Consulting, I talked in using pronouns about uh, we and us and, and that sort of thing. That was in a, that's in an effort to give the the consulting practice, um, the the notion or the appearance that is larger than what it is. Because right now it's mostly me as a, almost like self-employed. I'm helping, um, you know, supplement by. Um, I'm the I'm kind of the, I'm the sole person in my company. So whatever happens happens with me for my effort. So that's where you get more of the self-employment from. So if I'm not calling on banks, I'm not researching banks, I'm not going to visit banks, I'm not calling banks, I'm not writing banks, and bankers, bank leadership, the right people, then nothing really happens. Because I don't have it scaled yet, it's not automated or scaled to where someone else is doing those activities that leads to generating revenue for the company. But in all these materials I had at that time, those pronouns, the we's, the, the us, and that sort of thing, again, to make me look bigger, what it really was just me. And this CEO, who's it, it, he's very reputable. He is um, multi-millionaire you know, several times over up in Michigan. And we were sitting down, we were having a conversation again about the business, and he shared with me something. He said, listen, Yo, uh, Ron, I know that, you know that right now this is just you, but all your materials give this sense of, you know, contact us, and you know, um, we we as as a practice, we will come out and do this, and and when that's not the case, and he said, what happens is, that all sounds great, uh, and a lot of you all do this. It, it sounds great. It, it give it tries to give your brand something larger. But if that's not the case, it'll be found out, and that could be a black eye for your business. Because people want to know what's legit. If you don't have a team yet that's going out doing so, like if, I'll give you an example of my consulting practice. 
I don't have people on my team that are going out. Next week, I'm going to be in Kansas. Shout out to Kansas City, man. I'm going to be out that way uh, the middle of part of next week for a few days. If I, if you don't have, like I don't have people that are going around meeting with banks. Uh, it's just me. So I don't need to be touting or, or sharing or promoting that I've got this team doing things when that's not accurate because it wasn't. And many of us do that. Many of you guys do that, NYB. And he recommended, his advice was, uh, people are okay if it's just you. He said, listen, Ron, you've got the experience. You've been doing this. You don't have to do that. You know, if, if it's not the case, don't make it the case. So I'm sharing that with you, NYB, is that what's your business? As you're strategically planning, you're doing your vision board stuff, everything that you're doing, um, don't fall into that notion that you have to make yourself appear bigger than what you are, right? If you're a sole proprietor, then be a sole proprietor. If you have a consulting practice or you have a, a, a marketing firm or you've got a, a retail business, you got a retail shop and it's just you, then share it as just you. Because here's what people will do is they want to buy in and know your story anyway. But they're fine if it's just you. Right? They just want to know that. So what I did was, and what helped me this year, even with my business, is what I did was I I removed that those pronouns. I removed that conversation of trying to make myself look bigger than what I actually am. And I just made it up. I made it about me. In the consulting practice, it has to be about me because I'm the value. Because I'm bringing my uh, years of experience, I'm bringing my accomplishments, I'm bringing the time that I've invested to acquire the knowledge. So I'm bringing that to the table. That may not be natural for some of you. Some of you may be more modest thinking or you may not like to um, feel like you're up front or you're in the spotlight and that sort of thing. But when you're in B2B business and you're in consulting, that's going to be about you because you bring the value. So it, like in my shout out to Erica Dallas, uh, who redid my letter. Um, that's been a, a great piece for me to send out to prospects and even to existing customers. But I removed all that. She helped me remove all that from uh, my vernacular when I'm sharing uh, my business. It's not on my website anymore. So my website, even though it's Brooks Brothers Consulting, it, it's speaking from my first person account because I'm sharing this about me. Now, when I get to the point that I, um, have, I'm able to add people to the team, then that's what I'll share. So I'll share with you, NYB, that, that has helped my business because now I've gone into companies not talking about we and us and things like that where they can either go research and find out that's not the case or that's something everybody's doing. And so bank leadership, particularly people that are making money. Now people that, you know, at certain levels where you're not talking about high dollar stuff, and they, that may be okay. But when you're like me and you're dealing with um, CFO, CEO, senior vice president, executive vice president, they just want to know what the real is, right? And they've got to feel comfortable when they're writing those checks and sending those ACH uh, credits and that sort of thing that you are who you say you are. And if it's about you, let them just believe in you. So don't try to make your business right up front was his advice. Don't try to make your business something that it's not. So if I'm not this big, robust consulting practice, I don't try to compete against those and neither should you. Find what your niche is and then attack that. Find it and attack, and you'll find success now. Don't don't wait till 2020. Start doing it now. You're hearing this podcast now. Start doing it now. Remove that if it's not true. If you don't have a team of consultants or a team of salespeople or a team of administrators and that sort of thing, and it's just you, let them know that. They'll appreciate that. 
because they want to know exactly who they're going to be dealing with. Because here's the other thing that happens, what happened with my business is a bank or a, a bank executive would see my information or talk to me. And then when I'm talking about a team and all this type of thing, then they feel like, well, are they going to have to start over? Who are they going to be talking to? Or they might even ask me. This didn't really happen much, but this could happen to you, NYB, is that now they start asking you, well, who else is on your team? You know what I mean? And now what are you going to say to that? What's going to be your answer? Right? And if they feel that you're not up front with that or that's not necessarily – the case, it may not be a huge black eye for you. They just may choose to not do business with you. Or they may ghost you. You call, email, you don't hear back from them. So the advice that I got from the bank CEO earlier in 2019 that's helped me, that's helped my business, because people know up front that it's me, that it's just me. And so they make their decision, which this is what I love about business and what I love about particularly B2B business is I don't have to um, I don't have to try to be everything to everybody um, and people can come in and they can just simply believe in me and that's it right and they can make their decision quick one of the things that I, I, I say this or you know around my office I say this with people and people in sales that will know this is it's it's a bit of a crude example, but what you want to know is, hey, listen, I I like quick deaths in battle. I don't don't torture me. All right, you know what I mean. I don't like to be tortured. What I mean by that when you talk about business is I don't you know don't leave me hanging. You know what I mean? Don't leave me hanging. Like if you if you know you're not gonna do business with me, tell me. Right. Don't ghost me. Don't, you know, you know, don't not answer my emails. Don't not answer my calls. Answer the phone or reply to the email and just say either now's not a good time or I don't like you or I don't want to do business with you or I don't like your service. I don't like your product or I do. And, and like say again, now's just not the time or, you know, something else has changed. Just let me know. And so anything I can do to get me to quicker yeses or quicker noes is what you want in business because time is the resource that you have to manage. You can always go make another dollar, but time is what you don't get back. That's the resource that of all the resources, that's the one that once it's gone, it's gone. There's, there's nothing you can do. I don't care what deal you sign. I don't care where you, you hop on a plane and travel to. I don't care how big or smart you are. I don't care how popular your business is. Time's the one that you won't get back. And so if you could get to quick yeses or you can get to quick noes, that's what you want to do. And so the, in that advice helped me to do that this year, which uh, simultaneously helped my business. So I encourage you, MYB, to take heed to that advice and think about how you promote your business. If you have a team, promote your team. If you don't have a team, you don't have a team and let people know you don't have a team. Hey y'all, it's me. Let me share with you how I solve problems for people like you. When I talk to banks, I talk to them as, you know, listen, for banks like yours, here's what I do for banks like yours. Banks your, and typically banks go by size. So banks your asset size, Here's what I do for banks your asset size versus banks for this asset size. Here's what your peers do. And here's how I'm able to help them and I can offer that value to you. How? Because this is what I've done and this is what I'm doing. Right? You see how that works? This is what I've done. I'm not talking about something that I, I don't have no experience in or I just, you know, I was reading while I was sitting on the toilet. This is what I've done, documented, proven true, ask around. I've got references and receipts. This is what it was done. This is what I'm doing. Same thing. Today, this is what I'm doing. So think about that, NYB, as you go into the weekend. 
as you're gearing your business up for these last five, six weeks of the year, and as we go into a new year and a new decade, you know, promote your business for what it is and get to your quick yeses and get to your quick no's. Those two things right there, the quick yeses and quick no's, will help your business, I promise you. It'll help your business because a quick no, again, anybody in sales will tell you this. For me, I have to get roughly seven to eight no's before I get a yes. That's just, I've seen that over nearly two decades. I've got to get roughly about seven to eight no's. So I get excited when I get a no. Why? I've told you this before, because everyone gets me closer to that yes. So I don't get upset. I don't get on Facebook and social media whining about who's not supporting me or who don't share or who don't do this. I don't do any of that. That just feeds the negative energy. Don't feed that negative animal. You got, again, like I said, quick yes is quick no's. You got your positive animal and your negative animal. Which one you go feed? You got two dogs. You can feed the positive one. You can feed the negative one. And the one you feed is going to be the one that's going to growl and it's going to be, you know what I mean? That's the one that's jumping up biting is the one you feed. That's the one that's going to come up to you. That's the one that's going to be strong. So which one do you want to feed? Ask yourself that. Which one do you want to feed? So listen, that my time's up here on episode number 118. I hope you got something today that provided some value back to you. Cody Tate, what's up, my brother? Cody goes back a long time. Wendelin Payne, thank you so much, girl. I know you guys signed off. You're, you're a busy lady, of course. I, I definitely understand that, but thank you so much. John, Trevor, what's going on? Jane, how you doing? Latoya, what's up? My folks there, man. So thank you all so much, man, for, for tuning in. This has been episode 118. Listen, um, subscribe, listen to past episodes at themybpodcast.com or wherever you platform that you get your podcast episodes thank y'all so much we don't get to episode 118 without you all uh with minding your business community so we're gonna come I, i'm not sure if i'm gonna come next week with episode 119 because i'm gonna be traveling uh if i do i may come to you from kansas city missouri and or kansas city kansas depending on what side of the river i'm on um but uh thank y'all so much for those that are going to be traveling uh have safe travels uh, during this weekend and during the holiday season. Get your business in order and continue to mind your business, baby. That's what we do. We're minding our, our business. Shout out again, Ernest Fields, me and their Ryan for powering our t-shirts. Get those at themybpodcast.com backslash shop. Champ Ron, the Minding Your Business podcast. Go be great for yourself. Be great for your community. Be great for your family. What we do here is go back, 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 back.